Good morning, grandchildren, and good morning, my friends from afar. Just fixing to be a little bit of daylight out there. It's uh, fairly early, almost 7 o'clock. <clears throat> Today we're going to read chapter 11 in the wonderful book of Daniel. Let's clip on our safety belts first. Dear Lord in heaven, Father, please watch over us as we read through these scriptures, Father, and give us uh, understanding and wisdom. Help us receive that from this scripture, Father, that you would have us receive. We love you, Father, and we need you, Father. Amen. Now, with that being said, let's take a bite and see what it says. And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince, uh, which standeth for the children of thy people. Now, Matthew Henry said something uh, yesterday that's been on my mind ever since. And uh, he says here in this uh, dissertation, he says, Here is Michael, our prince, the great protector of the church, the first of the church princesses. Uh, some understand it uh, of a created angel. Others think that Michael, the archangel, is no other than Christ himself. He came to help me. And he's quoting the verses, uh, the verses where he said that. And there is none but that he holds with in these things. Uh, Christ is the uh, church's prince. Angels are not. And uh, he quotes uh, Hebrews uh, 2, uh, 5 uh, to state that out. Now, I was thinking about that uh, uh, several times since I read it. And I, then I started thinking about what I experienced in my life personally, which is uh, the revelation of Jesus Christ. To where that book, uh, the revelation of Jesus Christ, starts to have a whole new meaning of what the revelation of Jesus Christ is. And that revelation to me is when we start to understand that this book has a dual purpose. It speaks to the carnal being and it educates the carnal being and it allows him to achieve a spiritual way of thinking. And this is the uh, this is what this Bible to me is uh, what it's all about. It's trying to get us to understand the, the uh, uh, God's word in the heart. Now, somewhere in this Bible, I forget where, it states that uh, that uh, God wants us to write these words on our hearts. This is when we achieve carnal, um, we achieve spiritual understanding over carnal understanding. So now that I'm reading that <clears throat> and understanding that, this Michael may be a... Uh, What's the best word to put, uh, how to put that? Michael may be that spirit of the revelation of Jesus Christ. And uh, this is when it comes, because look at what Michael does. He stands. He's got a sword in his hand, but he stands up for the church. He stands up for the people that are seeking God. And he protects them in tough times. When this revelation of Jesus Christ, what you always hear me talk about so much, uh, takes hold in a human being. It's uh, To me, I can see that as a likeness for what this Michael is. So with that being said, uh, that little detour, uh, my thoughts on uh, what this Michael may be in our lives personally, because I believe we're all going to play all the parts in this Bible at some point or another in our lives. <clears throat> at some point, <clears throat> one day we may be, we may be somebody's uh, Pontius Pilate. Now, because we're crucifying their beliefs because we can't accept them because they don't fit in with our own our own uh, knowledge and uh, understanding of Jesus Christ. One day we may be John the Baptist that is helping people um, in the carnal in the first stage, uh, but not a, able or equipped to help people in the second stage, which is the younger stage, which is the uh, uh, the uh, Jacob to the uh, Oh, what's his brother's name? Uh, uh, oh, you'll have to remember his name. <clears throat> but the, it's the younger that's always receiving the blessing. And when we receive that revelation of Jesus Christ, it's in the younger of these two twins. 
just like uh, that uh, the brothers uh, is, uh, Ishmael and uh, uh, what is it? I uh, Ishmael and uh, uh, oh, again uh, the names elude me because I'm getting old. But there, there's this book is filled with stories of the younger receiving the blessings over the older. And I think this likeness is because that's how our lives is. When we start reading the Word of God, we're in the carnal. And we understand it in the carnal. And this is not necessarily a great thing, just to understand the Bible in the carnal. Hitler was a man who uh, read the Bible. He understood it quite well. That's why he sent so many people into the old, uh, the old uh, Middle Eastern lands looking for things that the Bible mentioned as we see depicted in so many movies like Indiana Jones. and Those, those things were facts of history. Hitler did do that. He read the Bible, <clears throat> but he could only understand the uh, carnal implications of it. That's why he became a monster, uh, or an antichrist, I should say. He, uh, Hitler couldn't understand that... Uh, uh, I'll always use this one little example, and I'm sure some of you heard it many times. But uh, somewhere in this Bible, it talks about it is a good thing to take the daughters of uh, the daughters of uh, 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 um, not Balak, but uh, Babylon, and dash her little ones against the stones. Now, if we read that scripture in the carnal sense, uh, we're thinking God is telling us somehow it's okay to take somebody's children and uh, snuff them out to kill them, to take their lives. And Hitler probably understood that particular scripture in that sense. Because look at how many little children he had his men uh, destroy in those gas chambers and these atrocities that he committed. Uh, when uh, the spiritual connotation of that scripture is that we are all the daughters of Babylon when we're in that state of confusion. And the, the little ones that we dash against the stone, there aren't uh, children. They were their ideas. Uh, when you are in a, uh, a carnal state, and when you have a thought come through your head, oh, I guess I could uh, do this evil thing to my brother. Nobody would know it. And least of all, he would know it. I'll just, I'll just rob him of this $200. He'll never know it left the, he'll never know it left the uh, account. And uh, this, is a, this is a little one. This is a thought. Everything in this world starts as a thought. And when we dash those little ones against the stones, we don't have to worry about what they become when they, uh, when they step off into maturity. So with that being said, you can see the difference between a carnal understanding of a verse and a spiritual understanding of a verse. <clears throat> so this whole carnal verse spiritual thing, it's a very big thing, and it runs all the way through this Bible. So with that being said, Enough sidetracking. Let me let me get on with the reading, and see where we uh, where we go from here. And uh, and at that time shall Michael stand up, great prince. And this Michael could very well be the revelation of Jesus Christ, which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation, even unto the same time. And at that time, the people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book. Now, this is all the people that believe in God are going to be delivered up. Uh, to who? To what? Well, to that carnality. We're going to have to pass through that carnal fire before we can achieve that spiritual relationship with our Father. Uh, we're going to have to go through this uh, carnal understanding. Uh, so we can get to the spiritual. <clears throat> Carnal understanding <clears throat> is good. Spiritual understanding is far better. <clears throat> Why do I say carnal understanding is good? Because we have to obtain it before we can obtain spiritual understanding. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth uh, shall awake. Now, now, we just read a couple of these books before this where he kept calling, I think it was Ezekiel, uh, son of... Uh, man, this is also son of dust. Son of, this is the flesh carnal being. So when it says here that many are going to wake that are sleeping in the dust, this spiritually is talking about a carnal understanding. That our lives until the point we become a spiritual being are very much carnal. This is the dust of the earth. <clears throat> this, old red, uh, this old red dirt of the earth. 
that uh, you don't have to dig down deep before you find that red. Red is always the number of car the uh, color of uh, carniality. This is why uh, Esau traded away his heritage for a bowl of red porridge, and he had red hair. This was to mark that story with carniality. This is what Esau represented, a carnal state to our same being, our same, our same, uh, our same uh, body. And uh, this is the carnal part of us. And Jacob represented the spiritual part. He was able to see beyond the carnal. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Some people never leave this uh, carnal way of being. They never want to make that uh, jump uh, from the carnal way of life into the spiritual way of life. So be it. And they, <clears throat> and they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. And they shall turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. You'll notice that uh, when you come in contact with somebody that's received this revelation of Jesus Christ, and I'm convinced that Matthew Henry here was one of those, uh, one of those uh, few people that uh, even as long ago as he re received that revelation, he is still affecting lives today with this book. This is a very well-publicized work. His uh, dissertation, I guess you'd call it, on uh, the words of the Bible. And it has helped many people come to that spiritual awakening. And uh, this is a great and wonderful thing. You can do the same thing at your water cooler at work when you're standing talking to the people you work with. You may say something that triggers a, a thought or an idea, which can then turn into a rash of ideas and a cycle of thoughts and uh, can lead somebody to a spiritual understanding. It doesn't take much to get that fire burning when something is dry in a tinderbox and ready to burn. If something is not ready to burn, like you're trying to catch a fire to some old green grass uh, that is not uh, not dried and ready, you, you'll, you'll spend all your matches trying to light that fire. But sometimes there are people around us, among us every day, that they are dry in a tinderbox, and man, they are ready for that flame to catch and go up in flames. And it don't take much, so we can all take part in that uh, in that process of the of uh, righteousness as the stars forever and ever uh, when uh, when we share the thoughts of spiritual what the bible means to us spiritually over carnal praise god amen for it but thou o daniel shut up the words and seal the book even to the time of the end and this is what he did when he wrote this book this book down uh, very few people has understanding of what these words mean. All of us have thoughts and ideas what we think it means. Most of that is constructed out of our carnal understanding. So uh, it, it, like anything else in this book, I'm sure these numbers of days and years are going to have some, another uh, a mature meaning in the spirit at some point. And it says, shut up the words and seal the book, even until the time of the end. Uh, many shall run to and fro. And uh, this to and fro thing makes me think of a lot of places in the Bible where we see to and fro. And the, and the knowledge shall be increased. As we read this uh, book, as we uh, read this book first in the carnal, but then we start to read it in the spiritual sense, uh, this knowledge will be increased. Things will start to pull together for us uh, more and more every day. And then I, Daniel, looked and behold, there stood other two. Uh, and uh, the one on this side of the bank of the river and the other on that side of the bank of the river. Now, these are two beings our carnal wants to see us looking at here, but you can also look at this as the two sides that you are because one of you is on one side of that Jordan River. You're on the, you're, you're on the east side, and, and your promised land has been uh, promised to you that it's on the west. So we need to cross over that river. And you remember that uh, many of us became frightened of that river because there were giants over there. There were big ideas. There were big things over there that we, were, we became frightened of. And there's a lot of hesitation about crossing over that river. And uh, some people were not allowed to cross over that river, like Moses being one of them. But this river is the, uh, 
is uh, the Son of Man is on one side, the Son of God is on the other. And one said to the man clothed in linen, this is Jesus, which was upon the waters. Jesus walked upon those waters. Uh, probably to point out this scripture to us to bring Jesus in mind of this scripture of the river. How long shall it be to the end of these wonders? And I heard the man clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the river, when he held up his right hand and his left hand. This is both carnal understanding and spiritual understanding. Unto the heavens and swear by him that liveth forever, that it should be for a time, times and a half. Now this is probably caused more conjecture and more confusion and more argumentation through historians through the Bible than any other uh, part because it's such an important uh, part of the Bible. But as you can see, it's not meant for us to understand emphatically what this means, though we often at times think we do. And when... He shall have accomplished to scatter the power of the holy people. All these things shall be finished. And I heard, but I understood not. Daniel saying, I hear what, the, what is being spoken to me, but I, I don't get it, is what he's saying here. Then said uh, I, O oh my Lord, he's just uh, in, uh, in a heartfelt uh, Expression, he said, Oh my Lord, what shall be the end of these things? <coughs> here, Daniel is saying, Lord, what's to come of all this? I'm, I'm lost here. I'm kind of confused. What, what is happening here? What is going on? And he said, Go thy way, Daniel. No answer here, is it? Go thy way, for the words are closed up and sealed till the time of the end. And uh, uh, many shall be purified and made white. It's the process. It's not the, I'll, I'll, I'll get on with that in a minute. Purified and made white and tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. Now the wicked would be the carnal. Like I keep bringing up people like uh, Adolf Hitler and, uh, and uh, General Armstrong Custer, and you can pick your thousands of your his figures in history that will fit this bill. Many, there were many, many people that read the Bible that did horrible atrocities because the wicked <clears throat> shall understand not. They can read this Bible, and basically all they get was what they're their heart desires, and that, if that's an evil intent like Cain's was, then that's what he's going to receive out of it. But the wise, people who are wise enough to seek the loving heart of Jesus Christ and let love be their filter, they'll understand, uh, just like that uh, little model I just used about the daughters of Babylon and uh, destroys, dashing those little ones against the rock. We, we can understand that in two different ways. It's what, it's what you have in your heart. What do you want it to mean? What, do you, what are you after? Are you after the means to do harm to the other people? Or are you looking for justification to be holy and loving? It's all in what, what we're looking for. Within this process of life that we find ourselves in, and this tribulation that is coming up, you can guarantee that whatever outcome it is that you truly seek and desire for the outcome of this tribulation, you're going to find. Uh, years ago, I used to say this all the time, we find what we look for. I had an old friend of mine, an old dear friend, an old expression of his was, uh, he told me one time, he said, remember Blaine, wherever you go, there you are. And this is a, the more you think about that old saying, the deeper it gets. Uh, because it's where we go is what we find. If we want peace and love and holiness, then we'll find it. If we want loopholes in the Bible that justify us to committing atrocities and uh, what's that when you kill a whole bunch of people, uh, germ, uh, uh, genocide. If, you want, if you're looking for justification to commit ger uh, genocide like Hitler did and people like him often do through our history, then that's what you'll find. So this is a process. 
Yeah, if we look for God in goodness and holiness, we'll find it in these very words. If we look for astrocities, we shall also find that. And from uh, the time that the daily sacrifice shall be taken away, and the abomination that maketh desolate, our daily sacrifice, we're making it right here. This is the reading and reaching and longing for the Spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ through these words. This is a daily sacrifice. Uh, in times of old, people would sacrifice little goats and little uh, rams and things. Well, what, what was those things to those people back then? They were, it was their time. In order for you to have a flock of goat, you had to put in your time. In order for you to have a flock of sheep, there was time. If you were a gardener, if you were a producer of uh, vegetables and things, Every vegetable that you used to bring and sacrifice to the Lord, that was your time. Today, in our time, we sacrifice to the Lord through our taking our time. We could be spending this time right now in a fishing boat, fishing away, or doing something that the flesh really has a good time doing and enjoying. But we're taking our time and we're sacrificing it to the Lord Jesus Christ that we can have some idea of what His desires and will for us is. So uh, to take away that... Uh, that abomination that make of desolate. Let me see where I was. And from that time that the daily sacrifice was taken away. Remember the Antichrist at that point, he had cut a deal, something like a seven-year deal or something. And in the middle of that seven-year deal, he changed his mind. And then he took away the people's uh, uh, sacrifice. At some point in our future, we can expect the same thing. Our Probably our own government will take away our ability to pray or to read the Bible on the Internet or to uh, share the word of God. This is not that far away. And so we, at, at the time that daily sacrifice shall be taken away, and the abomination that make of desolate set up, there shall be a thousand two hundred and ninety days. Blessed is he that waiteth and cometh to the thousand three hundred and five and thirty days. Now, these are numbers and math, which I didn't delve off in there. you got to have a young, sharper head than mine. Uh, some of you people are young, and I'm sure by the time many of you uh, see this uh, YouTube or read these scriptures in the future, these numbers may uh, be uncovered and mean a lot more uh, to you in latter times. But go thou thy way till the end be, for thou shalt rest. This is the death of uh, Daniel here. And shalt stand in thy lot. At the end of days, uh, many people that are resting uh, from this earlier time, they're going to be resurrected. And you can, uh, your old carnal brain will think of a thousand things what that resurrection means and how that can fit into your carnal understanding. But know that it's the spiritual understanding of what resurrection is, is really the only one that matters. Is there Matthew Henry's notes here? If you've studied with me before, you know the process I like to do here. I like to put that camera over a section, and when that camera gets still, you can hit that uh, pause button, and you can read, uh, uh, if you're interested in what Matthew Henry had to say about the very scriptures we just read, which, is, uh, which has been a very interesting book. Uh, these uh, these uh, uh, help books... A lot of people don't agree with them. A lot of people say they, it's the King James Bible or nothing. And that's a lot of malarkey, I think, because I think you have to read any of these books with the King James Version. I got a little Bible there that I like to read. It's called, uh, I'm going to show you here in just a second. I'm almost done with this. It's called, uh, uh, oh, what is it? It's a, This Bible is written on a sixth grade reading level. And it's called the Living Bible Paraphrase. And this has been a blessing in my life. I would never try to read just this Bible. But uh, when I read a chapter in, the, in the, the King James, and then I'll read this, because this Bible talks more like we do today. And we can often get lost in the these and the thous and, the, and all the old English language. And uh, this guy here, uh, who was not from not that long ago, I think the 50s or 60s, he started work on this book. And then uh, uh, Billy Graham uh, got a hold to the New Testament. He did the New Testament first, and uh, he got a hold to it, and he thought it was such a wonderful work, and he mentioned it in his Crusades. And then next thing you know, the guy had uh, 
all these orders for this book to be published in the Old uh, Testament completed. By, it was Tyndale uh, Publishing, I believe. It used to be a widely circulated Bible. You don't really see them much. I find them at garage sales and estate sales and things like that. And uh, every time I see one, I, I pick it up. I, uh, I love you. This is why I read these scriptures. The next book up is going to be, it looks like Hosea, I think is how you say that. And uh, we'll get off into that book next and see what uh, lies in that, in that book. My goodness, the time is flying, I tell you. Uh, here we are with so much going on. I uh, talked about the election yesterday, and uh, I just, yeah, I'll talk about it a little bit more right now. I'll close in saying that uh, when I said yesterday that I'm not going to vote, in no way did I was I trying to encourage anybody else not to vote. I just, uh, for me personally, I'm not going to take part in it. I, uh, the best thing I can do is elect Jesus Christ, Lord and Savior of my life. And uh, I, we do have a, uh, a responsibility to uh, God and country. And if we don't uh, put God in that country, uh, we end up in trouble. And I happen to believe that uh, <clears throat> that part of it is a lost cause at this point. And I believe that what is going to happen, which we're reading much about, I think this election is going to have much to do with what we just read. And uh, I, I think uh, spiritually, I put my eggs in the spiritual basket these days. I, I think what you will and... Uh, and we all must think what we will about elections and things. We all want a better country for our children. We all want a better life for our grandchildren. And uh, so uh, with that being said, I love you. This is why I don't spend a whole lot of time talking about politics, but I spend quite a lot of time talking about the Word of God. And this is the answer for what else is. Putting up another golden calf and building a strong economy is not going to help this country. Where this country is lost is is morals. It is lost in the grace of God. Uh, put, uh, pouring money on a fire doesn't put it out. Uh, pouring them precious living waters of Jesus Christ on a fire is the only thing going to put this fire out. Now, with that being said, uh, grandchildren, I hope you guys are still studying along in the, these uh, scriptures. I hope you guys are, are in this wrestling match as we saw Jacob was in that wrestling match with that old angel. Uh, <clears throat> all the way through the night. And that angel told him, let me go, the light's about to break. And he said to that angel, I'm not letting you go until you bless me. And uh, this is the angel that you're wrestling, my friends. This holy word of God, this Bible. We can't make heads nor tails of this thing, seems like, when we start reading it in that carnal mind and our carnal state of being. So we wrestle this all through the night. That's our darkness. That's our carnal understanding. And uh, But the light's coming. Uh, help is on the way, fear not. And uh, when that old uh, angel of this book tells you, just give up on me, to gift up this fight, the light's about to come. And just when you think you got understanding, don't let go until this messenger blesses you. You know, many times in the Bible, the word uh, angel is translated as messenger. And there's no greater messenger than this right here. And now that I, what I was telling you about the uh, Michael, that archangel, I believe that Michael, that archangel, is in the revelation of Jesus Christ. He comes late in the latter of the book, the younger of these two twins. This is the old twin. This is the old Cain. This is the old Ishmael. This is the old... Uh, uh, <clears throat> oh, what's the other? Uh, I can't remember, but uh, this is the new. This is the uh, Abel. This, makes, this is why we say we're Abel, because Abel was Abel. That's why our word we use for Abel, when you're able to achieve something, you're able to achieve that spiritual revelation. Um, this is the uh, this is the Jacob over the Ishmael. <clears throat> excuse me, over the Isaac. This is the Isaac over the over the Ishmael, and so on and so forth. This is why these stories. You know, the Bible never points out that it just gives you these stories where that reoccurs over and over. All these youngers receiving the blessings and receiving the inheritance over the olders. Why is that? Because this is what the New Testament does to us, my friend. That New Testament is where our blessing, our inheritance comes from. That's right, Jesus Christ. That New Testament, that new thing, that revelation of Jesus Christ. Hang in there with that wrestling match. Uh, you'll be glad you did, I guarantee it. I love you. I enjoyed reading this book, and I look forward to reading Jose. If you've uh, received something from this study, 
that maybe you haven't received before, then come on back and read with us some more. There's no telling what the good Lord may reveal in us as we read through these scriptures. Praise God. What a wonderful thing. I hope everybody has a great day. Remember to uh, trust God's plan. He's got a good one. Just so happens, my friends, he's got a good one. You have a lot of things that weigh you down and trouble you. Uh, young people in your life that maybe have died <clears throat> that you didn't feel worth. You may be worried about their souls. Trust God. He's got a good plan. He doesn't leave anybody out. <clears throat> if, you, uh, if you've struggled with these Bibles for a long time and you haven't received much from them uh, on the spiritual level, trust God. He's got a good plan. Don't worry about it. Just go on about your business, and that's the business of reading the Holy Word of God to getting to know that precious name of Jesus Christ, Yeshua. Praise God. Amen. Uh, what's the other thing I like to say at the end of these? Uh, praise God for the day, every day. Not everybody's afforded another day. So every day is a gift to you, my friend. Use it wisely. Use it as a gift, a, a gift to Father and yourself as well. I love you. Hope everybody has a great day. And come on back and read with us sometime. Won't you praise God? Amen for the day every day. Amen.